Okay, now that we have a lead that was successfully loaded from Gmail into Google Sheets, we have to add another step because we don't want duplicates, right? If the same person sends me emails all the time, I'm gonna have a lot of rows that have the exact same email address. So the way that we're going to check is look for the existing email address. And if it's new, if the email address doesn't exist yet, then we'll add it to the Google Sheet. Otherwise, the recipe will simply not do anything. And there's two parts that we're going to add here. There are two steps. One is going to be a search, and the second is going to be the condition. So let's move back to the recipe. All right, and we're going to be adding these two steps, the search and the condition, right before this existing one. So let me just walk you through how to add some empty actions before we actually configure them, okay? Let's add a new step, choose action, add a new step, choose conditional action, right? This one's going to be the search and this one's going to be the condition. I'm gonna click this to close it down and we're actually gonna drag this. You'll have to click on this side over here and drag it all the way down to the end. Make sure that it's indented, so you have to drag it over a little bit. And delete this empty action. There we go. So now we have four steps, right? This one's eventually going to become a search, and this one's going to become the condition. So let's configure the application. This is going to be Google Sheets. Oops. And instead of adding a new row, we'll search rows by query. Remember that ours was called demo-blog leads, and the sheet inside of it was just called sheet one. And the search query is going to look something like this. You can see it inside of the hint. And this is only the format for Google Sheets because that's what they're looking for. And in our case, it's going to look like this. Email with a capital E, space equals space and two double quotes. And inside of those double quotes, we're putting in the actual email address. And the way that we know that this email is an email with capital E is because that's the header inside of the sheet. So let's put in the actual email address. Remember that the information was all available on the right-hand side. And here we're going to choose the from address, just like before. And let's add the condition now. It's going to ask us for some information that we want to test. This information is going to be available again on the right-hand side. And we can choose, for example, email. So if the email from the search rows does not exist, then we need to add the row. So what we need to choose is not present. OK, there are a whole bunch of conditions here, and you can look through them, choose what seems right for you. In our case, we'll just choose is not present. And that is the entire recipe. I'm going to click Save so that we have that. And now we can actually rerun the existing job. And that's going to take the existing trigger, so that email, that same email address, and search it. And if the search comes up with no emails, with no rows, then it's going to add that onto the spreadsheet. Now you'll see that it's not doing anything here because it found that there was an existing email address. Let me show you what that looks like. We'll go through this a little bit more in the future, but let's click into this existing job. And I'll show you real briefly what this has told us. This is a record of everything that happened. So first, there was a new email. And you can see that it's the exact same email as before, just by clicking on that and clicking on output. Now it's searched for rows within the sheet. You'll see that the output was one existing row. And since that row existed with the same email address, the condition comes out as false. And it did not add a new row. And that's how we check for existing leads.